How's it going, guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go under a uh, contract. Sorry, called Waste Not Want Not. Uh, it's on the second bunch of contracts, and uh, what I've got to go and do, I'm starting on the Crossroads map, and I've got to go and deliver two lots of consumables and two lots of bricks. So I'm gonna. It's quite a long trek on this one. Um, yeah, from Crossroads, I'm going to cut across to the trailer store to get a trailer, and then I can also grab two lots of bricks from there. Uh, head down there, grab two lots of consumables, and then cut all the way back up uh, the crossroads map and travel to the institute map, and then I've got to go and drop some stuff off. And yeah, when I get to those maps, I'll sort of show you the routes I've taken. Um, just a quick note though, I'm going to go to the trailer store and grab some bricks, but you get you can get the bricks when you drop the consumables off. It's uh, It didn't really explain it, or I, I don't know, <laughs> I didn't read through it, so... I didn't realise that. Um, yeah, for this one I'm taking the ANK Mark 38, uh, like the army one because the civilian one has other attachments, everything except a sideboard for some reason. Got a goddamn horse for me, I was just left that in like, I was able to pack him on the roof in the front of this truck, but in the end I just decided to sod it, I'll take a four slot ramped flatbed, so I'll just stick the loaf uh, in the sideboard because I kind of wanted to drop the hammer a little bit as it was quite a, a long mission to do. I didn't want to be hanging around, hence why I picked a vehicle that could go in high range and all that. And again, you can really tell like the gear cap and the way it holds you back in this phase because uh, this ANK thing used to be a bit of a missile, really. Thankfully, they've actually like fixed it a little while back. It used to be an absolute nightmare for tipping. Um, so because of that, I didn't really use it a lot. But it used to have a hell of a lot of power. It'd uh, motor its way through stuff, especially in high gear. And in high gear, it's still decent. It just, yeah, you can tell like the edge has gone a little bit. Not just with this, but you know, just as the overall, the way they've capped it and done it, it's just uh, is affecting this a little bit. And then going back there, I took a right fat hit of damage. I was, uh, yeah, only just set off on the mission. <laughs> I was like, geez, this is going to be a fun one. I mean, again, that's one of the reasons I take goddamn professional with me, just in case I need uh, some repairs. But yeah, this thing was picking up bits of damage. I put the custom muds uh, on this truck as well. I was just hoping like they sit a little bit wider, which they do. I scrolled through and was checking like th uh, those tyres versus the chained and stuff. And uh, yeah, these do, they've got the edge a little bit. Like I said, they generally fix the tipping issue. It's still a tippable vehicle, but not anything crazy. In fact, I believe in a few seconds might be quite a good example. Is it here? Yeah, so I hit there rocked off to the side, it thought about it but I got back to my wheels, that's easily, like, and then some it would have tipped back in the day I think on my uh, ANK I think it must be the gameplay and review video, but it was one of the first trucks I did, so it's probably, like, not quite as organised as my um, like, once I got into a rhythm we're doing the gameplay and review video review videos, but yeah, I remember trying to uh, do tyre tests and the special container delivery contest thing in Drownlands and uh, yeah, this thing <laughs> this truck is the reason why in some of the footage uh, well, on Drownlands there's cargo all over the place so uh, yeah got to the trailer store I'd kind of smashed my truck up at this point but I already knew, right, because when, when I get here I can Equip that maintenance trailer, fix myself up, uh, refuel myself, etc. And then, yeah, get a ramped flatbed. Now, yeah, this is what I, I'm picking the bricks up now. And strictly speaking, it didn't really make any difference to me because I was going to come here anyway to get a trailer. Um, strictly speaking, I could have got a two-slot trailer. Or I suppose, really, actually, I, uh, I'm still going to take a loaf of me, but I could have towed a loaf behind me. I could have got a different vehicle that has a crane. I can't equip a crane to this anyway, and again, I wanted to use a vehicle where I could drop the hammer, so something like, well, the Zix, you can't have a crane on that, um, but something that was like an advanced special gearbox and that, I'd just spend a lot of my time being like maxed out in the gears really, but not going particularly fast, so yeah, I wanted something with the, uh, the highway gearbox, but basically, the stuff I'm going to pick up when you travel across to the Institute map and drop off the two lots of consumables, 
it kind of does it like a stage completed because you can see in the top right at the minute it only mentions dropping off consumables to the institute it doesn't mention about uh, the bricks and the harvest corp portion of the journey really that was me by the way <laughs> I wasn't looking at the screen and just absolutely drove flat out into a uh, telegraph pole thing whatever it is lamppost slash telegraph pole um, yeah 40 damage to my engine thankfully it didn't really matter too much it didn't delete it that bad and again, got a goddamn horse if I need some repairs. But yeah, that <laughs> that bit was on me. Um, yeah, so it doesn't explain it very well, but once you get to the place where you drop the consumables off, it says stage one completed, and there's a little building next to where you drop the stuff off that just kind of automatically vanishes. And then there's two pallets of bricks just sat next to it. So in theory, if I took like a vehicle with a crane, once you drop the consumables off, it spawns the bricks where you are, so then you could pick them up there. I don't really mind that I did things this way, though, because, well, one, I didn't know anyway, but, as I said, I was going to the trailer store to get a trailer regardless. And even if I wasn't, even if I didn't have the loaf with me and I wasn't going to get a trailer, I would have ended up going to the trailer store to get the maintenance trailer to fix myself up because the damage I'd taken early on. So, yeah, it wasn't really any difference to my mission. This, though, is a pretty good example. I tried to go as straight as I could to the um, where I picked the consumables up from, hoping that I'd be able to reverse this trailer a little bit before it starts being a tosser. But sadly, uh, yeah, decided to be a tosser pretty pretty damn quick. So um, just behind the bandit now, there's a, another goddamn horse. <laughs> Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, I, so I stuck a winch from the back of the trailer to the loaf, and as you can see now, just keep ramming it around, really. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, I mean, a little goddamn professional. Look at him. He's headbutting them ramps at the back. And it's just enough that the trailer wasn't tipping while I was trying to kind of force my way around. Thankfully, the ANK is one of those vehicles where once you're kind of wedged up against something and you floor it in reverse, it'll kind of just keep spinning the truck around. Which, uh, yeah, is a handy little feature here and there. There's a prime example where I'd have been doing a, a 50 point turn otherwise. But yeah, little loaf uh, saved me bacon, as usual. As is his way. Uh, for this one, I could have just gone back up the road that I just came down, but for the sakes of not doubling back on myself, I thought I'd just cut up a little bit of the, uh, the railway track. And again, Distance-wise on this mission, there's a bit of a trek to do, so I thought if I can, uh, yeah, just kind of fly straight, really, as the railway is. I've already blown a tyre now. I mean, again, it's partially, it's not strictly this vehicle, it's just the nature of this game, that the faster your vehicle goes, the more easily you take damage, so just inherently quicker vehicles are going to take more. But yeah, this thing has uh, already took a little bit of a beating. And now, by the way, strictly speaking, I could have just carried on along the railway. I just, for some no apparent reason, kind of wanted to cut around here. And I'll be joining back on the railway just for a little tiny bit. And, uh, yeah, I actually equipped a spare tyre to the back. You can see it kind of at the back on the bottom of the truck. Which I don't normally do, because that's what I was kind of testing. It's not really that bad now, but I was going to say, like, because it's at the bottom at the back... If you go down a bump and you're trying to go up the other side, you might bottom out on the uh, the tyre at the back, but yeah, I don't really think it was much of an issue. But long story short, I fixed the tyre, drove ahead not even very far, and then blew another tyre. These railways, I can't seem to stay on them too well. Keep skidding all over the place. More damage. And uh, yeah, I, I could stop again and fix it. I just wanted to get off these railways out of these uh, little channels so I keep flying off to the left and right but again though this thing would have absolutely tipped ten times over by now it wouldn't have even liked that <laughs> level of tippiness a little bit awkward but again we got out of there and uh, yeah well I was going to say I'm back on the road but for mere seconds like I said though, in high gear, this thing actually, it does keep a nice pace to it still. Even across all these like, yeah, boggy mud roads and that, and then you get little patches of mud that kind of 
slow you down even more. And as well, I'm still not a massive fan of like these tyres, as in the characteristic, uh, uh, well, the stats of them. The custom mud tyres, they just they look like they should be better than they are. But even that said, this uh, yeah, it's been doing all right. Well, the mission ended up yeah, the video time's just over half an hour. Obviously, it's a little bit longer for me to get the footage and everything. So I'm drawing the waypoints and messing around in bits and bobs. Again, the magic of editing can help cut it all down a bit. But um, yeah, overall, it went a little bit quicker than I thought. I think it was about now. Whilst I was getting bogged down in the mud, I thought, all right, I'll just quickly unpack the loaf, switch to him, fix my tire, get a little celebration horn, get him repacked, and we're off. The headlight, I put the uh, roof lights or whatever they are called these days, <laughs> fog lights, whatever, on the uh, the roof of the ANK. And yeah, even though this map, or this phase, just feels like everything's going dark after uh, a few minutes, the lights don't really show up that well. I was hoping they'd uh, do a bit better, but yeah, it's one of them, it's just, I don't, I'm not keen on it. I will say as well with the A and K, it's got a fairly small fuel tank, 200, so it's a bit like the same as the Dolphin, but it does keep a decent pace. But yeah, generally speaking, when you're driving around, if there's a various, I think this fuel station was always a fuel station, but a little bit later on, I'm able to use one uh, that I've got unlocked. And then there's one of many reasons as well to take a goddamn load for me, because as he's sat in the back and I'm not using any fuel on it, he's got 120 in the roof rack and then 80 of his own fuel tank so it's another 200 basically so I can completely uh, fill the A and K up again and at this point I'll like sod it, I'll cut along <laughs> cut across the grass I just want to stay in that high gear and overall actually in the end this was a pretty decent mission I don't think it unlocked anything specifically where I drop the bricks off to, like the last bit of the mission where I'm going to uh, the Harvest Court map. There is a warehouse there, but I believe it was already open. But I just checked it out quickly at the end of the video just to see what what you can actually get from there and stuff. Uh, yeah, so that's one map down. Onto the, uh, yeah, the Institute map. Which for this one, pretty much from the gateway I've came through, I'm going to go to the bottom left of the map. Uh, that's where you're going to drop the consumables off and then essentially just cutting all the way uh, along to the Harvest Court map. And like I said though, I'll sort of, it makes it easy to explain it when I'm there, but yeah. It'll, uh, it'll offer me the option of bricks. Which to be honest, like I said, I don't really mind either way because on some vehicles anyway, you put a crane on it can like, it raises your centre of gravity, you flop around more, you can tip over and that. Not that I, uh, I hate taking cranes or anything, but yeah, I didn't even have the option with this vehicle anyway. But like I say, the mission didn't really make it that clear. Unless when you click into it, maybe if you read that little bit of text like in the top left. But I've got to be honest, I rarely, if ever, do. I that was going flying across, but... Oh yeah, it'd have been a fence, wouldn't it? I think blew it up with a horn. Yeah, see how much better pace you keep though when you just stick to either the left or right of the road. That little patch there probably wasn't too bad to be honest. These bits though, well worth cutting around. I was already eyeballing now, it looks a little bit tippy to the left or right. I was going to go left and i seen this tree, I probably should have just gone wider and gone round the tree. I think if I'd kept my pace going I wouldn't have tipped. And then now I think it's my trailer that's caught on that dead tree, even though it's not even the root side of it, it's just all the branches that are kind of snagged. You can sort of see it slips its way loose there. <laughs> that's what she said. Thankfully there was uh, another dead tree just further away. That's one thing I do kind of appreciate at least as a as an alternative, is like, even though there's a lot of stuff to get caught on in this phase, 
up to now, touch wood, there's always usually something, yeah, like actually anchored in place lying nearby, usually another dead tree where you can uh, fire a winch out and actually build up a bit of tension. Although, messing around with the winches uh, the other day, I've noticed, yeah, they have definitely got weaker. Like the world's sketchiest bridge. I actually drove over it better than I thought. I was more worried about the uh, ramped flatbed. Because that's one thing, because I haven't got a crane. If I do tip, it's going to be the uh, the quit and reload method because, yeah, I've not got an option to reload them. I can get the loaf out. I have done it before. <laughs> Video proof exists. The loaf can load stuff, but I wouldn't exactly say it's a particularly time efficient method. So this is why I'm dropping the consumables off, and I didn't realise it was going to do this, but you see the building there just vanished basically and it's now no longer a building and then you can see yeah two pallets of bricks and really you need a bit well there is a couple of fuel stops along the way I was gonna say you need a vehicle but uh, you've got a sideboard and a crane and preferably a decent amount of fuel to do a bit of long distance traveling if you really like if you didn't want to bring the loaf which well that's blasphemy <laughs> I'm always bringing the loaf he saves my bacon too much. He's already saved me with uh, a fixing a tyre. It's only that up to now, but still. Once you uh, have got a blown tyre in this game, it does make a bit of a difference. Now this field, I don't, there's little patches. It's the same sort of terrain that's next to the experimental field. So it's like the uh, where you're going to have to do the like hot potatoes contract as well. Yeah, the field right next to that is the same terrain where it's boggy as anything. Uh, even the tractors kind of start getting clogged up in that stuff pretty bad. Thankfully I didn't have to cut too far across it but yeah you could see how how brutal it was really. I've got to say maybe I was just getting lucky I don't know but the uh, the ramped flatbed was actually not being too much of a dick tonight other than when I grabbed the uh, consumables and I was trying to reverse. The whole design of that rail yard is a bit crap though because yeah it forces you down like that bottleneck where you've got to drive forwards really to go and get the cargo but there's no way to loop around out of it so it's just inherently going to be awkward and even when I was turning around there's like a pile of scrap that I started getting caught on that's what was trying to make me take like a tighter turning circle which almost tipped the trailer uh, yeah cutting around here in the background you can see there's a bridge that's missing there's a trailer sat in there I assume we're going to have to grab that trailer for something, but I'm not too sure yet. I don't know if there's ever going to be an option to rebuild a bridge. I'd say probably not, because it has kind of offered, you can see sort of tyre marks in the mud in front of me. There is kind of a route round like where I'm driving now, basically, is the, uh, the workaround. So yeah, I've got a feeling it's never going to give us that option. And then now, I'm not too sure. I didn't really think I was caught on anything. The only thing I think it might be is the front corner of the ramped flatbed uh, is like caught on that rock but then as I spun the camera around to look at it it kind of came loose pretty, seemed pretty easy so I don't know. But I don't think I was caught on any of the dead trees unless there's like roots under the uh, water a little bit which they have done before. I certainly won't put it past them doing it again. But anyway, made it out of there. And yeah, at this point I was pretty much trying to uh, speed run it. Well, because about now I was thinking like, I've got to do the run all the way to Harvest Corp. And I knew like with a loaf I could put another 200 litres in this truck. So I knew I had like another full tank of fuel to go. But... Uh, yeah, I kind of thought what I've got now is the supply, so you'll notice that some, it's probably not the best time to sort of notice it now, but once I get up at, up to speed in high gear, in fact now might be a good example, the fuel per minute I'm using goes from sort of 25 odd down to about like 8 or 10, 20, it still blips up and down a bit, but it drops a hell of a lot once you're actually at that speed. And like I say, at this sort of, yeah, this speed, if it's using 8 or 10, it's uh, 
you actually do cover quite a lot of distance for your fuel even though it is still a bit of a baby sized fuel tank in the scheme of things. I can't remember actually, has this ANK civilian got a bigger fuel tank or not? I can't remember. I was going to use that vehicle, it was just it wouldn't let me put a, uh, yeah, a sideboard on it. Which I suppose really this vehicle is, that's kind of any difference, it's just the civilian version's kind of got everything but well, actually, that's not true. It's got a couple of different things. I think you can have the saddle high, the saddle low. There might be a fuel thing, but to be fair, it actually didn't give me a lot of options. Um, personally, I like cutting over this section of river. I must say, it was pushing it a little bit with this one. Didn't really hassle the uh, snorkel or anything. I'm trying to remember now if the uh, does the ANK normally float or not. Either way though, go in on a bit of an angle just so like the current doesn't sort of tip me over. And uh, yeah, not the quickest through there, but it, it wasn't terrible. It made it, so I can't really complain. And like I said, I could, there's another way you can cut around the road to the right of that bridge in the background, or the bridge that's down. But yeah, the uh, that river crossing in its own right is a little bit awkward. And again, I just kind of like picking a river section to cross really and just sort of try and chance it see what happens a bit more road damage but yeah as I'm uh, approaching there's like a warehouse on the right now I've already done the mission to unlock it where it's got uh, a truck repair service and a fuel station so I was like there's, there's a tiny little glitch there um, yeah fly in do a quick bit of drive by refueling get that done just as I drive through that next square it's the truck repair so it just fixed everything and yeah basically that kind of helped the fuel really I, I knew uh, it wasn't going to be pushing my luck too much because again I've still got 200 on the loaf as well yeah I can't really see with the fuel now because it shrinks the screen while I'm recording but now I'm going along a straight road. Probably a pretty good example of like how much the fuel drops once you're wound up in high gear. And to be fair, a good chunk of this mission is road driving, really. So, well, there's definitely sections of rough stuff. I was going to say, you more want to pick a vehicle that, um, yeah, kind of can drop the hammer. But you see, driving along roads like this, if I was in the Zix, even though it's like beast mode. It's not going to struggle on the road. Um, it's just top speed wise it's not going to be very quick. That bloody field to the left where yeah I've got to do the light hot potatoes. I think that might be the field as well where you've got to do farm 12 bloody potato samples or something. Definitely not looking forward to that one. And then yeah on to the harvest court map. And this time I've came through the gateway from uh, the Institute to Harvest Corp, not Heartlands to Harvest Corp. So that's normally the one from Heartlands. Yeah, I'm in like the top left of the map, not really the bottom left. So instead of going down there, because there's another bridge <laughs> that's out, seems to be a uh, a theme they like running with on this game, kind of cut across the top of the map and then, yeah, sort of follow the road around. It's the warehouse pretty much in the middle on the right-hand side of the map. And like I said, I think I can even see there, yeah. I believe it is already a warehouse that's unlocked. And again, more road driving for the for a good chunk of it anyway. I've not really had too much of a chance to... I've been round this map, obviously, exploring it and that. But other than that, I've not really done a whole lot on it. I can see from like the thumbnails of the map loads, it's got a picture of the newer Tager, I think it is, with one of them bloody fan blades on an 8 slot trailer, which I'm sure will be a tremendous joy. But speaking of which, there's the fan things in the background. It's a bridge that actually works, and I didn't have to build it myself. Possible thumbnail, we'll see. <laughs> Wait till the end of the video and I'll pick a bit. Yeah, this route actually across Harvard Scott was a pretty nice uh, way to go. 
with a river crossing, which I quite like doing, and it, for whatever reason, it doesn't feel much of a punish. It feels uh, about like it should, really. Well, it didn't just feel like complete instant death mud or whatever, where it just forces you to wade through it, sort of one mile an hour, if that. It might be uh, it's a good thumbnail contender, actually, with the uh, with the fans in the background. I assume there's the one in the middle we're going to have to fix. Truck wasn't happy with whatever gear it had in auto, so all right. Slam it in the high gear. some trees. <laughs> I just noticed I was smashed over a rock that could have rolled me but I wasn't even paying attention to that. I've seen that tree and I'm out. And then for the most part it's pretty uh, easy driving along here even though it's a dirt road. It's more like the traditional dirt roads really. Not like big thick deep ruts and uh, yeah it's more like you get on Black River and that sort of thing. With the sketch ass bridge. I can't remember one of them the, uh, the wood keeps kind of breaking apart and disappearing every time you drive over it, so not sure how well that's going to work long term. So it'd be cool if they added like those bridge mod things that modders have added. There's plenty of uh, ways on this map that they could do little sections where you got to just run a, run a little bridge thing out there. And again though, I still think this is a solid vehicle, even with all the like overall nerfs and everything and stuff's got. It's done pretty well on this mission, I think. Like I said, the biggest thing is the lack of tipping anymore. I'm going certainly fast enough where you can hit an awkward bump and roll over. And like I said, I certainly don't think this is unrollable by any means. Give me five minutes <laughs> and I'm sure I could manage it. But um, yeah, like I said, I was kind of trying to be careful within reason on this one just because once I tip I haven't got a crane to repack the stuff but yeah just this, this thing wouldn't have lasted two seconds how it was back in the day and, uh, awkward bridge and kind of just iffy bit in general here but again even the ramp flatbed I'll just keep looking at it now it's suspiciously planted I'd like to say maybe they've finally fixed it and put the weight low, but <laughs> I've got to be honest, I wouldn't hold my breath for that option. There are certain things that they just seem either completely reluctant to fix or they just never ever will. And I don't know, I, could, I just can't picture them. I don't know though, because it's one of those things where it could just be something random like that that they fix. And then some other like, glaring obvious bug that needs more attention like or more yeah, attention paid to it. They'll ignore. It's like when they uh, yeah patched the Cat 745C so it couldn't hold single pieces of cargo. It can only have a cargo container now. Which that was like one little quirk that made it potentially possible for a couple more missions. The chances now of needing to deliver one cargo container outside of a contest where sort of speed and the quickest time possible is the name of the game. It's just, uh, I've not used it for bloody ages. Years probably because of it. Going along here, I managed to miss every single plank going I think. I thought I was going to get caught there but it's not too bad. As well, since like at the beginning of the doing this mission I seem to be taking like one hell of a beating on the uh, suspension and tyres and everything. On the first map really, wasn't it? The um, crossroads map. But on the Institute and here, I don't think it's uh, really bit me that badly at all. Might take another like one suspension damage, but nothing nothing where you sort of just one hit and half your health's gone. And then yeah, almost there, just last little sections to get through, a bit of muddy muddy crap. I was just eyeballing those sunflowers. I could have cut across really. <laughs> if I'd known, I would have. In 
high gear, that's the way to go. And then yeah, to this warehouse. Yeah, there's a section at the back so that it is already a warehouse. Get to the square and drop them off. There's another one in the bag. I think money-wise was it about 8,000 odd. Not too bad, like I say, it's a bit of a, a lengthy mission but just more. Pretty chilled as well, you just kind of drive in, sort of taking in a lot of the scenery. And uh, yeah, more than it being like a particularly difficult mission. And just quickly, I drove into that warehouse to see, so it's service spare parts and metal beams you can get from there, so... Just, uh, yeah, worth knowing, unlimited cargo as well, so you can be frivolous with it. <laughs> get a load of cargo, roll, rinse and repeat. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today though. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's goddamn professional and he's got plenty of spare tyres. And I'll be back soon.